16 year old boy that was way too happy jumping around in my house. <laughs> well, how did that happen? Well, um, I was on holiday with my parents. Um, I bought your, your program um, a few months before, but I was like lazy. I didn't do anything with it yet. Yeah. So on that holiday, like I was committed. Okay, every day I'm gonna do like w watch like a few videos, make sure. notes, etc. Right. Yeah. And then um, I was also getting more active in the in the community because there were like things you had to do in there. So then you posted um, this 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 video of you. I think it was like okay, you can go with me and my team to Rome um, if you prove yourself um, with a sort of like video where you are like telling us why I, why you need to come, right? Yeah. So I was like, okay, he's never going to take a 16-year-old with him. But I was like, it's good if he sees my face. Sure. So I made the video. And then um, I just laid back my phone. And I um, I remember I was like waiting on some, for someone to call me, right? Mm -hmm. And then my phone rang and uh, I picked it up. And actually it said Rabin. And I was like, what? It was like a FaceTime call. So... I, 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 I took it, but my Wi-Fi was horrible. Mm -hmm. And then, like, after a minute, it, it connected. And then there was, like, you, like, sitting here like this. Like, ah, oh, bro, bro. I, w I was, like, happy, right? Like a 16-year-old yeah. kid meeting, like, my idol. And it was, like, oh, bro, bro, sh sh shut up, shut up. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> I have two questions. Do you have a 1,000 euros? I was, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Can you come to the end of the room? I was, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, you can come. Wait, oh, why did I, I ask I, if you had a 1,000 euros? It, for, like... That was expenses. Like the oh, budget. just your own expenses to, yeah, to be yeah, able to, yeah, 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 okay, to, to be sure. able to. So, and then you, I'll send you the info later. I'm like hungover as fuck, but <laughs> I, I'll, I'll tell you later. And and then you literally, that was it. That was it. Like that was the call. And then me being like so happy, I ran to my uh, ran to the beach to my mom, telling him, "Mom, I'm going to Rome." And my mom was like, "Bro, what? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about?" And and then. Um, uh, of course, still. So yeah. I really needed to go on the trip. I was like, I need to go. I need to go. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was convincing my parents, but they were like so skeptical. They didn't really even knew I was in your program. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then my mom went on the phone with Rabin because I was like, yeah, you can call with him. He's, he's totally trustworthy. No worries. And like, after, I feel like you've called for like 20 minutes or 30 minutes with my mom. I don't mom. remember. Oh, you don't rem okay. I don't remember. Yeah. I do remember your mom being super sweet at the end. Yeah, and and my mom hung up the phone, and I was like around there, and thing I was like, "Is it okay?" And she said, "I didn't understand like any word of it because he was like talking so fast, but <laughs> he sounds nice." <laughs> <laughs> there was literally, and and then my mom, uh, uh, so then my mom said, "Okay, you can go, but you can only book a one uh, one way flight because if he turns out to be some criminal or you mean, pedophile, you mean return flight, right? No, n no return flight. Wait, what?" Because if, if he turns out to be a pedophile or someone, something, yeah. you didn't waste your um, uh, money on the second flight, so you could immediately go back on a new flight. Oh, that's okay. okay, okay, okay <laughs> that okay, was okay, like okay. Her, her security okay, yeah, 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 okay, okay, <laughs> installed. That. But then, yeah, then we, uh, I, I came back from holiday. Next day, I went to, uh, went to the airport in, uh, in Amsterdam. I Got remember. In the, in the plane, and then you picked me up with Sayed, and I was like a bit like, Oh, what's gonna happen now? But it was like a very good week, and um, with the whole group, we like I, I feel like in one day uh, it was like, oh, he's he's just here, he's like one of us, right? Mm. And it wasn't like, oh, that's a 16 year old, we have to yeah. take care of him or something. Uh, so it was like it was a wonderful week or like 10 days or something. You know what I what I remember so vividly is that you came in with the energy like, I'm here to learn, I'm here to do yeah. it. And you were all over the place, like, oh my god, I'm here. Okay, yeah. let me do this, bro. I was so inspired. By you being 16 years old. You didn't look, first of all, you're like six foot five or whatever. You're no. fucking tall. You're <laughs> two, like hella tall. And you were 16 years old. And you come in there with the confidence on the phone. And I gave you like some insiders and I saw you just whoosh, going up, making sales left and right. Bro, it was nuts. Yeah. And the was, first time cool. I saw you like on the phone, I knew you were like a special kid. Because the way you were on the phone giving me that message and what kind of vibe you gave off to me. I even remember, because back then I used to do my own sales calls. That's like the, the moment you started. Yeah. I literally did like an Instagram message. I remember like, yo, I have yeah. like one spot left or something, right? Something like that. I don't, I don't vividly it, it, it was like three spots left before you um, were going to close it before like the, no, no, before the price went up. That was it. And, and, um, 
It was $1,000 before it went to $4,000. And I did the call with you. You're like, oh, yeah, that's good. And you sent me the money. I'm like, what? Yeah, it was a very weird sales call. Because at that time, I actually, I had like a sales job. Yeah. And I, I, I did e -com. So at that sales job, I, I was like very eager to be the best. So I always mm -hmm. came off with like the best scores. But I always wanted to improve. And then... I yeah. saw you, but I didn't really know what you offered, but I know, knew it was something with sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And after the call, I still didn't really know, <laughs> knew what it really was, besides that it was uh, getting better in sales. So I was like, okay, well, if, for example, if I get like 20% better of this, it's going to be worth the investment because I'm, I'm, I make actually like... A thousand, fifty. Bear in mind, this month. kid was 16 years old back then and <laughs> making decisions like this. Wait, how old are you now? Like 18, 19? 19. 19. 19. Holy shit, bro. This man is still yeah. young. And eventually you do it and look at where you're now, bro. Like you have um, closing in on the seven figures? Over seven figures. Over seven figures. Yeah. And it, that all started with a thousand dollars in a dream. <laughs> Yeah, thousand dollars in a dream. That's that's a perfect way to describe it. <laughs> a thousand dollars in a dream twice. Well, the first time was for the community and the course, and the second yeah. time was for your plane ticket to Rome. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. That's so, true. So, what is the thing? Because the, the funny thing is, like, you started like at a sales job. You were doing your own thing back then, and I could see you had a talent. You had a nick of trying to improve yourself and doing better yeah. stuff like that, right? Then. You come with us and you do the exact same thing. You fucking work for me. You're doing calls. And I'm like, wow, bro. Like, you you are talented. You know exactly the words. I just give you a few pointers and I could just see you go whoosh, sky high. And now, you're 19 years old, have done over seven figures. And I'm just wondering here, like, how? What is the difference between the Ola of now and the Ola of three years ago? And how, what is, like, the difference in the journey that has happened to you? Yeah, so I feel like uh, the success me and my team uh, have had is, is one of the biggest factors in this, uh, that is communication and sales. And I'm not saying that here because I'm with you, but that's like the honest truth. Um, of course, my business partner is, uh, of course, my business partner is like also one of uh, uh, one of your more successful students, Menno. He's mm. also been on the pod, and we're both like a big on communication, sales, influence. And I feel like in the last three years, two and a half years, I, I feel like we've lost a bit of contact. Now and then we spoke, but not that much, of course, anymore. You and me? Or yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, me, me and you. And in, yeah, in the last two and a half years, a lot of hap yeah, a lot has happened. But I would say also a lot of bad things, but also a lot of good things. Um, so so let, let's focus on the good things for now, right? I remember we were still in Rome. You do your thing, you do sales, and you start making a good bag of money. Yeah. I feel like in your first month, you made how much? Like at least a grand or two. You made your money back. Um, in, in the first month, I've did, like in the first week, I made a thousand euros. And then in the three weeks after that, so in the week in Rome, mm -hmm. I, my goal was that week to make basically the make the money back of yeah. like the cost of sure. the, the trip, right? Sure, sure, and that, sure. That happened. Then after that, um, I just started closing uh, for your program. And I feel like, I'm not sure about the exact numbers a anymore, but I feel like the in the second month, I've sent like an invoice of 3.5K or something. Mm. And then after that, I did one month again, similar numbers, I think. And then I stopped actually closing for your program, I feel like. I remember, I remember. So 3.5K, yeah. 16 years old making more money and you forget you also had your other sales job so you also had that to come with so you were probably making like five no grand. no no I, I quit that sales oh, job I remember. and I was doing e -com I remember. at the time so I was doing e-com and yeah. I was doing so you're doing e-commerce e e and I was doing like school so like it, it wasn't like a full time thing it you was were like going to school. two days a week after yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the webinar right at, at Thursday yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh wow yeah. that is so sick bro so you actually made that, that, that is so insane to realize, man. Yeah. The fact that you're 16 years old and you made three and a half thousand dollars, which is life changing money for people. And yeah. you're 16 years old, three, that's not even dollars, it's euros, it's even more than like whatever it is. Yeah. That is enough to fly across the world, to live a, a proper life. Maybe not the best villas or whatever, but just a proper life across the world. And you did that as a 16 year old. Oh, I don't personally think you're that talented. And this is not to, to yeah, butcher yeah. you. I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, like, 
I see the big difference of you being in the way you think. The, cho the choices that you make are different from choices that other people make. And that's mainly because you look at everything in a very curious way. What can I learn? How can I improve? How can I win from the people around me? Yeah. And you don't see your age as a limiter. No, I, see that I, I actually see my age as uh, the biggest advantage I have. Because when I was like 16, 17, 18, mm -hmm. like the, now it's not more like the, the wow factor, but at first when I was very young in every room I came because I knew how, how, how to like speak, et cetera, because mm. I did sales, sure. like it, it was the wow factor. And also because yeah. like in, in the other online communities it was like, oh my God, this guy's crushing it, he's young. So mm. it was a big advantage and actually sure. it helped me a lot. Sure. Uh, and also I feel like my age is a big advantage because um, I still have a lot of time ahead of me. 100 percent yeah like imagine you've done you've done over seven figures now yeah. you're 19 years old imagine where you will be when you're 35 you probably have like your house in amsterdam with like a portion from the door and you're just living it up man you're just fucking crushing it yeah and that's that's in a Kinda. while so uh, let's talk about like a little bit more in depth that's this a little part of your story you're doing super well now and what are like the biggest lessons that have ch changed the course of your life next to the way you think so sure, you have a specific way of thinking after analyzing you and talking to you, uh, how you're gonna answer multiple of the questions and tell your stories, people can subtract lessons and ways to adapt that to themselves. But I wanna hear like concrete lessons that have changed the course of your life. Give me a few. Okay, one actually, one big lesson for me, and I feel like I've actually learned this one from you, so it's interesting to share, is that, um, your ego, and it's especially one in the sales uh, mm. world, your ego is your biggest amigo, but also your biggest enemy. Sure. It's, your ego is not your amigo, but it is at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um, okay, so you elaborate on that. I want to hear, hear your story of it. So uh, in the first like one and a half year, I feel like I've, every penny I made, I spent like every penny. And it was like in, out, in, out, in, out. And eventually that led me into big trouble, but um, we'll maybe get into that uh, later. But that, that's one thing. But I feel like one of the biggest reasons I'm here today at the point where I'm at is because my b ego is really huge. Mm -hmm. um, and you've also noticed that probably. <laughs> that's I feel like that's one of the things that you got you so far, especially in sales, because, well, you also had a very big ego, I feel like. I did used to have a yeah. way bigger ego yeah. than I have. I, I feel like like I'm sensing it l a lot less now, but hmm. so when I met you, it was let me let <laughs> no, nah, it wasn't that big. It was it was a, quite a, a yeah. substantial amount bigger than it is now, yeah. but um, but like wanted to win. Like it's it's not so. Uh, so let me let me give, let me let me give you the thing that uh, the big lesson that I've learned over these three years and why I've changed. Because back in the day, I used to flex with like clothing or yeah. cars or whatever and nowadays i if i do get a car is more for myself if i do get something it's for me i'm not doing that to yeah. show from the outside world it is let's call it yin and yang balance because there is darkness and if you want to have light you need some darkness to contrast that to if you want to eat food you need a little bit of salt but too much salt is gonna fuck up your food if you're too much ego, your food yeah. is not going to taste nice, mm -hmm. right? So it's about balance. And using your ego for good is where the power is. So having an ego while being in a conversation, while trying to do a sale or trying to help somebody for that matter, it's not going to work. No. Because if I have this conversation with you right now, and you're going to say, no, I disagree because blah, 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 yeah, yeah, without yeah. even listening to what I'm saying, we're not going to end it. We're not going to end up somewhere, right? No, it's right? not going to be nice, but... But when you have an ego, as in having that masculine competitiveness, that's sort of fine. If, if you're going to be a little bit too much again, too much salt, yeah. not going to taste nice. But having that competitiveness and willingness to win is good. Wanting to obliterate your opponents depends on how far you take it, but it's still good. Because the thing that makes us a man, I would not have reached the highest heights that I have if I didn't have that little bit of ego to push me through that. My ego makes me do all-nighters to crush my work because that is the thing that 
makes me want to run. It's my purpose and my ego combined that want to push something forward. It's my pride that I have of my name and the respect that I have for myself. And now suddenly it's fine because my ego is for me. Yeah. But the part of the ego where you're going to give too much salt is doing it from the outside world. Exactly. Is insecurity. Yeah, true. Is having a Louis Vuitton bag and dragging it around everywhere, <laughs> not for yourself, because we all know the only yeah. reason you have the Louis Vuitton bag is to show other people. And if you have a car, sorry, <laughs> I know what he's, kind of he's picking on me. <laughs> I know what kind of car you bought, yeah. but the thing is, listen, I know the car that I bought, that BMW, the M3, yeah. bro. I've always dreamt of having a car like that. Yeah. For me. I, dro I drove 16 different cars because I really love driving. Like, yeah. there's nothing that makes me feel more free than being on something that's fucking fast and just makes me go. I love cars. Yeah. So being in that car fulfills a different need of me than my ego. Freedom. Exactly. Which is something that you also have. You yeah. also have the feeling of freedom. If something gets too tight and too closed up, we, we all close. We're too chaotic for that. We don't like that. Yeah. So that freedom gets sufficed because of that same thing. But if I would buy that car for egotistical reasons because I want to dunk on you, like, fuck you, brother. How much did you pay for your G? What? 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 Well, I pay it. You know, this thing gonna work out. <laughs> yeah. And the reason why I, I'm just going to sp spoil the beans with you because this puck is going to go out. In yeah. Like two, three. yeah. You're going to get a G wagon. Yeah. Um, I've driven the car because everybody talked about it. Yeah. And I'm in mean, that, that fucking thing drives like a fridge. It's okay, not comfortable. It's not comfortable. And the only reason you bought that car is because there's a stigma of having a G-Wagon. And everybody thinks that you, bro, listen, the biggest joke is, is that you didn't even like look for a car yourself. You ask your fucking Instagram, hey, what car should I buy? What is a good car to buy next? So you need, valida true. You need validation from other people in order to get the other car. No, that's not true. That didn't you happen. didn't do that? No, that's I not true. I swear it, bro. I no. swear it was either no. you or somebody you, else. Um, you, I actually dreamt of that car uh, since the age of 14, and I'll explain to you why. Because Lil Kleiner, you know Lil Kleiner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He drove that car, and I found it a very badass car. And ever since, okay. um, I, I moved back to the Netherlands, uh, Gyro, a friend of mine. Yeah. Me, we, uh, we, li we lived, uh, I still live, he doesn't, we, yeah. but we lived together in Rotterdam. Yeah. And in Rotterdam, a lot of G Wagons drive, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, sure, it's sure. always like, oh, that's a big G, bro. Okay, that's so you insane. actually enjoy the car, bro. I love the car. I I haven't driven it yet. Okay, that's that's the thing. I know a lot of people. Okay, so you have two types of people. People say it's like the shittiest uh, driving car ever. It has mm -hmm. too big of a round uh, yeah, circle, yeah, yeah. but it's like more of like the class and the elegance it brings with it. And the, um, so you're saying you do it for so okay, okay, like, like for example, without, without um, interrupting you, yeah? let me ask you a question. What is the actual why of you buying a car? I swear to God, not for Instagram. Okay, so I actually let's, have let's, thought let's about it. not even putting it on Instagram, but I'm not gonna lie. Should it's I a tease car. my car to you guys? What yeah. should I show? Okay, bro, Let me see. Oh, <laughs> here's a headline. <laughs> okay, bro, 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 listen, listen, listen. So I know what you're doing here, but I actually have thought about maybe not even using the car for like Instagram and marketing. But as you know, you I'm should. in a space, you, you should. it's, it's no, good you should. for marketing. You should. But exactly. No. Yeah, so that's the thing I'm, stop I'm lying. posting it. Say that you also bought it for that reason. Because no. if you, oh, you didn't. I, I swear to God, you can ask him, I didn't buy it for that. It, I, it's an, uh, second, uh, a secondary thing that comes with it. I know but Menno. I, no, 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 no. I know Menno. I'm going to explain. I know Menno wouldn't. Listen, I know you, Ola, and I'm going to be really straight yeah. and honest to you. Look at what you're wearing. Look at how you yeah. put yourself out there. You care a lot about how other people yeah, see you. Yeah, exactly. Right. So this, this is the thing I wanted then. to say. The, don't so lie. There's if, nothing if wrong no, no, with no, that. No, 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 no. But, but I, I said a spe very specific, specific thing. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't buy it for Instagram or okay. to be that guy. Okay. But I'm going to be honest. Like, yeah. I want to drive in the G-Wagon and be like, this, right? So that's true. Give, give me your hand. But not for Instagram. But, but that that's good. Now say. you're honest. Now you, so, you do say, yeah. but th there's nothing wrong. Yeah. Once again, a little bit of salt. There's nothing wrong with getting a little bit of validation from some things. It is wrong when, for instance, I go to Dubai a lot, right? Yeah. And I'm at tables in Dubai. I come in with my BMW and people just get completely, their ego gets hurt. So I didn't even ask these people. And they're like, oh, that's a nice BMW. You know, I have this Lamborghini. And I'm like, I, I, what? But I don't care. <laughs> like, what if it just happened? They, uh, you, you, I had like, like a good watch back in the day. And literally, the see the watch. Did you like, sell it? Sorry? Did you sell it? Uh, 
let's just say that I, all my luxury items, I have detached from them. So that's the difference. You put it in a fold. Let's just let's just let's just keep it that way yeah. for the people watching at home. I don't own anything, and uh, let's just let's just uh, okay. keep it at that. Um, I, I get what you're meaning. So, <laughs> my point is that these people have like an inferior in, inferior problem. They'd feel inferior the second somebody comes in with something that isn't even superior. Imagine you have a Rolex. A Rolex. You have a, a date. Uh, day day date right yeah. which is a semi expensive good watch yeah. somebody comes in has a uh, day just which is a lower esteemed yeah. uh, Rolex and he's just flexing with it he's like putting this on a table and that somebody with low self esteem is like well I have a better watch what the fuck is he thinking <laughs> now, yeah. I, now I want to show yeah. and that is basically what is happening in Dubai with all of these people they have they're so insecure that they need to get validated by showing I paid more money and this is that. And a beautiful quote that I heard somewhere is you only start living life not by not owning any items and any material, but not letting the material own you. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. And I feel like a lot of people, material owns them. They think they are the materials that they have. And down. I feel like for a lot of people, and I'm going to be lying if probably that will maybe also happen a, li a little bit with me with the G-Wagon, but I haven't picked it up yet, so I don't know. But like for a lot of people, um, the material becomes a part of their identity, right? So it's like a thing of them. And um, I feel like when that happens, uh, for example, if you would lose everything, mm. then you're, I you also lose your identity. 100%. So you really need to... Um, detach your results in the external world with you being yourself and your identity because otherwise your identity falls down and who are you now, right? We've had this conversation with Meno. I'm not sure if Meno talked about this conversation back to you no, on the pod really. um, where I talked about that people um, people think that they are the results that they've achieved. People think that they are the ending of it all. So now yeah. I've achieved a material result, so I can use that to buy items that can resonate with the results that I have achieved. And the second I'm starting into a conversation, all I talk about is the results that I have, this that I've done, this that I, da, 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 da. oh, I've made over seven figures. Oh, but let me not forget that I made over seven figures. And, da, 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 da. Yeah. and now suddenly, all you can talk about is that. But imagine though, all of these people listening or watching, don't know why they don't know if you're good all they've heard is okay you've this you achieved this result but how am i supposed to know you're actually that good you are not the results you've pushed you are not the g-wagon you are the choices that you've made that made you buy the g-wagon you exactly. are the choices that you've made that made you over the seven figures you are the way you do things the way you save things that is what makes you you that is your value that is your identity not everything that comes on the yeah. outside, right? That's true. So that's why it's super interesting to have a conversation with somebody because then you can dissect what somebody is saying, how somebody is saying it. Now I see your actual intelligence. I understand, oh, this is what Ola is. This is how Ola thinks. Now I understand what choices have made him him to be able to buy that cool car, nice shoes, yeah. whatever it is. That's why I sold everything because I don't want people, people to know from a get-go how good I am or how well I'm off. But the yeah. second when people start having a conversation with me, then they start to realize, wait a minute, it's quite you, interesting. You wanted to attach the value to you being raving and not being your external results. Exactly. Cool. I mean, I've achieved all the results because I'm me. I'm the way I am. I've put myself in the position. But how, how, how did you come in like the, the situation? Like, cause I feel like there has been uh, somewhere in the last one or two years, there has like a big change happened. Like mm. what, what, what happened to you? What, when did you realize this? Because before, like y what you said, you bought the M3, you mm. had like a few nice Rolexes. I feel like mm. you bought a lot of Louis bags. <laughs> no, hundred <laughs> like, percent. Yeah. So, so when did this happen to you? Like the, you the, need the inside? To there, there are multiple things that happen. First of all, you are the average of the people you have around you. Yeah. All my friends are incredibly wealthy. Most of the good friends that I have, the most authentic people, the people that I genuinely look up to and love, 
those are people that are completely different from the pack. Those are people that you have a conversation with and they question even a question you start to ask at the start of the word. Like there's, there's anything. And I love that because, yeah. excuse me, I like being challenged. Mm -hmm. So when I have a conversation with people, I just like to rethink my life. These people are worth multiple eight to nine figures. They're very well off. I have never in my life seen them wear any designer clothes. Never in my life have I had a conversation where they try to outshine me. Never in my life have I seen them not being generous or giving towards me, towards anybody else, and how it is. They, they have, you, you have never seen them generous or not, not being generous? Not being okay, generous. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And whether it is on giving and yeah, however yeah, yeah. it is. I've had relationships with people that are worth, worth multiple seven figures. Let me just even rephrase that. I've been screwed over for multiple seven figures by people that were exactly the thing that I was. Showing off, putting myself out there, being really egotistical. And you start to see, they, they were like stingy. Not even like, I mean, come on, bro. If you're not paying somebody out for a million or two, then... There's definitely something on. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> so I saw how blinded people got by money. I saw what money can do to people, how corrupted it is. I've done jobs and worked with these people, and I just could see this is not how you do business. This is not what my heart feels like. It, it, it is integrity or good morals or good values. So I've seen both opposite sides. I've seen people with an extra zero pasted behind that, and I see such a clear difference. So pick your poison. Who do you aspire to be? What kind of life do you want? I've seen how much money can toxicate you, poison you to become a person you don't want to be. Mm -hmm. Because those other people that I just talked about that are all in Dubai, they're toxic. They've lost the plot. Mm -hmm. They don't see it themselves yet, hopefully. I hope with the truth of my heart that these people will see the light too one day. But some way, somehow, they are probably not happy. Or they think they're happy, but they're not. They have so much weight on their shoulders, so much pressure that's not even there. All because they want to be at the other side. And I don't roll with that. I detach myself I from interesting everything. but what was like the one thing that happened what was like the one thing that happened that really made you realize this what was it you getting screwed over so for over multiple millions so okay let, my life is in multiple parts right yeah yeah no. there are multiple lessons you learn from multiple places on earth da, 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 da. lesson number one was okay you get screwed over for millions what does that mean what does it mean to get screwed over for millions? Why did something like that happen? And I don't blame anyone. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at myself. How did that just happen to me? What did I just learn from this? Dude, I'm not going to go out there, hate a person for screwing me over. Fuck no, bro. There are people out there making my name as black as it can be. And I, like that, I don't want to carry any hatred in my heart because that's just poisonous. So I'll leave it. I'm well off. I'm doing fine. I hope they will do fine, but that's the first lesson. Second one is, I'm good. I'm having my money. I'm still on that side. Why am I doing this? What is me? What is my purpose? What do I want to achieve? I want to help people. Cool. I'm giving away money. Why does it not suffice? Because it's not me giving it away. Why am I giving it away? Because I want to be seen, and it's not good. Is that why you quit your YouTube? I uh, well. I, I have a YouTube. This is literally a YouTube channel. No, but like you, 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 you started like with yeah. YouTube with like Mr. Beast ish videos, right? Yeah. Like spending. With yes. You, you quit that, right? Yes. So in my first few YouTube videos, I spent over a quarter million dollars. Yeah. And bro, that shit didn't work out. Why? It was inauthentic. It was all also a big lesson that I needed to learn that you can't just give away a shit ton of money and expect stuff. But it was for one big goal. My big goal was to change the world and create a positive impact. You might still remember it because that yeah, was the yeah, thing. Yeah, it was like the thing on your, your background on yeah, your phone you every, every day. Yeah, I know. So that is, if that's your one purpose that you have and you always want to achieve, then every single decision that you make is towards that. 
doesn't mean you make the right decisions towards that. It does mean that you're trying to improve to go towards a specific purpose and goal. And that was what I was doing, even though I thought if I, if I get a huge audience where I spend shit ton of money, people will come in and I will make more so I can give away more. But it, it was completely wrong. It was completely off. I didn't have a right team, right mind, right things. So another lesson learned. Okay, cool. How can I give away money in a specific way where I help people and do stuff? And that's how Freedom Society came alive. Yeah, let's talk a bit, a, bit more, uh, a bit more about that because honestly, like, I haven't really... I, I know, like, you're, you're starting, like, a new community, but I, yeah. I don't know, like, the specifics of, All right. of it. So, so um, number one, I want to change the world. I want to help people. If I give away all my money... You can help anyone because you need to help yourself. <laughs> it's not, no, 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 not only that. I will, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I, yeah, sure. Yeah. I will have yeah. no money left for myself. Yeah. <laughs> so that's stupid, right? That's yeah. just blindly dumb. So instead of just giving away all my money, how can I find something that will make me money, but at the same time put money aside so I can put it in some kind of treasury to help more people? So I thought, all right, cool. Let me just do this. Let me just start a new business. And all the business that I do, 50% of all profits that I make, I put into a treasury so I can make documentaries, help people and grow up my brand, my business, and get more people along to do the same thing. So imagine, whatever, like I want to do it myself, right? I want to touch it with myself. I want to grasp it and help because that's the thing that fulfills my purpose the most. I don't care about all these materialistic things. I want to take care of my people around me and then the rest of the world. I want to be able to people get so much knowledge that they'll be able to do all the things in life they've always dreamt of and do whatever, right? That's why I started The Secret Skill at some point. Yeah. That's why, I, like, for all the good reasons. So now, Freedom Society is basically everything, all the knowledge that I've learned over the years, even the knowledge I'm talking to you right now about mm -hmm. being more authentic and having a better value, how to make money in a way where it's pr providing for you and the people around you and being able to travel the world, da -da -da, all that stuff. For not $4,000 or $1,000, but 50 bucks a month. Because yeah. that is reasonable. Now I can get a lot of people on. For like 50, 50 bucks a month? 50 bucks a month. Okay, that's cool. 50% of that, of the profits that I make, go into a treasury. I have a different business. I'm making an online, uh, an online product, a SaaS product. Mm -hmm. Also for that, I have business partners. But 50% of the profits that I make, my profits, I still put in there. Not promoting it because it doesn't matter. But that is just the way I want to do my business. Why? But what happens with the treasury? Because you said something about documentaries, helping people, yeah. etc. Like, can you go into specifics? Ima imagine there is, um, in Turkey was an earthquake, right? Yeah. And now I feel like, yo, I have family that is uh, Kurdish is in Turkey. I want to help them out. Um, there are a lot of people of my viewers that are also there that are seek, they deserve help. I want to book a pl plane ticket with a team of people that I can create from this treasury and just go out there, help, suffice, give them stuff, uh, document it. And the reason why I want to document it is not to flex on people, but it's to show them that it's cool to help. Yeah. Why? Because people think it's cool to be egotistical and flex their G-Wagons, but instead <laughs> of flexing their G-Wagons, I want to flex that it's yeah. cool to help people. But, but, but it's an interesting topic, actually, because, like, online... Uh, I agree with you, by the way. So, like, online, it's, like... Exactly, like if you, for example, show off with your G-Wagon or your mm. U's, whatever, it's like cool and people get inspired, right? Sure. And if you, uh, I, I saw a clip of you and I was, I, I agreed with it a lot because um, I never showed this on Instagram, but giving is one of like my core values. Like I sure. give a lot, I feel like. Mm. Uh, I try to as much as possible. That's why I don't have any money left, I know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I don't have any money left or lose your money constantly. Exactly. No, yeah. <laughs> I, no that's the same problem though, I know. But, but um, so the... the the, f the thing is, like, people hate on people giving online, but people don't hate on flexing with, like, for example, G-Wagon, Euros, etc. It's a, it's a very interesting topic because people see it as uh, you trying to um, show off, like, how good of a person you are, right? Mm. But, I, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm quite... Um, how, how do you think about that? So, the stigma of giving should be cool. The stigma of being, the issue is, is that all of these e guys, they're just in Dubai flexing rented cars because that's the life that people want to live. Exactly. And I understand that. But there is nobody now that is putting us better stigma, except Mr. Beast, by the way. But life needs full transparency. So if there's nobody telling you it's cool to give, 
And everybody is just because they have their own things in their mind. Oh, why would you show people that you're giving away money? Well, sir, because you don't give it doesn't mean that I can give it. And if I can inspire you to do the same thing, that is only good. Right? And I document it so that more people will see it, so that more people will also help in with the same cause. It is a perfect loop that will do the same thing. And I can fulfill my purpose doing that specific thing. And I grow my audience and more people get helped because they see my face board. Yeah. It's perfect. But, 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 but uh, it's like, it's very interesting because I always hesitate to like share shit about that. Tell and people why. Well, because the stigma is on it. No, no. You tell people why. I'm giving this because I want to inspire you to do the same thing. Mm. So if you're yeah, going to come at a good me, angle. if you're going to come at me and say that it's wrong to share, then maybe you should share some too and show it too so that more people do the same thing. But no, no, no. I'm not saying uh, it's wrong. I actually agree with... No, no, you. I'm talking about your viewers. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your yeah, viewers yeah. say like, oh, Ola, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Yeah, and then at the same time, they like your post with a G-Wagon. Yeah, but <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. But, but do you get like a hate, a hate on you sharing? No. Okay. Not anymore. I, what, the first time I was in South Africa, I remember I literally the thing that I did is I was going to anybody and I was just giving them water, money and banana. And I posted that on shows. I was like, yo, why are you posting that? I'm like, what? I'm just helping people out. And the same uh, person is like a rented uh, yeah. car in Dubai in their story, right? Yeah, <laughs> but exactly that. And I'm like, yeah. what the fuck? What? <laughs> but here's Bro, the you thing. you shouldn't share that. <laughs> the, the, the issue is, is that these people have this whole fake scenario of what they think life is. But once you start actually living that life, you only see how shallow it is and how giving and purposeful and loving it is to give. It is so much more hard-filling to be able to help somebody out than it is to dunk on somebody for having it better. Exactly. Uh, another thing I wanted to know, because actually for the viewers at home, like we haven't properly spoken in like a long time, yeah. a long time. So sure. this is also for us like a, a thing to catch up. But y you were talking about your purpose, right? Sure. So your purpose being uh, making a positive impact in the world. Yeah. What What is the, the main, because as you said, Freedom Society is a vigo on that. Is it like, the, is it, just the profit it generates, but or also the thing it actually does. Can because can you talk a bit more in specific? Freedom society it teaches does? people to live the life you are living right now. You are a great example because the things. Oh, maybe that, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The things that I've learned, you eventually made you make choices, made you meet people like like Menno. Exactly. Um, you've communicated way better towards yourself and towards the outside world, and now you're standing at the point you are now. Right. And I love to see that, bro. Like you're one of a thousand people that has done that uh, through my course and through my community. And it's not me taking all honor because you've done it yourself. Yeah. yeah no, but no, no, I get you. I'm glad I could be a stepping stone. Yeah. And that's how I see myself. As long as I can give people stones to step on so that they can fly themselves, then I've been doing my purpose well. And I don't want to ask the jackpot. I just want to ask a reasonable price, 50 bucks a month. Uh, a little bit more when we have the community, but who the fuck cares? Uh, when we have like the, the app connected to it, it's like 10 bucks more, who the fuck cares? But um, we, we, we have that, and 50% of the actual profits just go into a cause to help people. So you have two reasons to join. You have two reasons, because you're helping me fulfill a purpose that even might be your purpose, right? If you can do that, then why, you wouldn't, why wouldn't you do it? No, I agree. It's, it's actually very interesting because I, I don't know if people know this, like online, I feel like it's more of like a, a dark side of you, but you, you did like the secret skill, right? Yeah. So the dark that, side? <laughs> no, 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 not, not that. But after that, you went like away from like Graham also, you, you, yeah, yeah. you went in the shadow, you, you did some businesses. And I'm, I'm curious, like, uh, you want to talk about that? I did a lot of investments. I did a lot of communities that I built and other stuff that I did indeed. And that's also the reason how I got fucked over. But in that meantime, I work with people that are so insanely wealthy that have learned me to do a proper way of business. And this is the big lesson that I want to close off with. If you develop yourself into being a better communicator, you're able to find people and communicate and network with people that are far beyond your league because you know how to show your value to those people. And the number one thing that has made me my multiple seven network is just being an authentic, valuable person and always being out there to give a little bit of value. If only it's just a smile or a fun joke or an actual proper conversation trying to add a little bit of value to that person. And before you know it, without even knowing, people call me 
that I haven't spoken to in years, and you're doing businesses that are doing a lot of figures. Yeah, because this is really interesting, but you already said it yourself, because I always felt like you weren't like the best entrepreneur, you, but you were like the best like networker, like the, the best sales guy, and that's what got you to the, to the point where you're at right now. And I'm, I'm very curious, like, um, I, I, I know a bit about like how you went mm. into the big business, of course, but we don't have time for that now. But do you feel like uh, sales is like the number one stepping stone towards like where you're at right now? Or do you feel like there were other things in your journey or other skills you had to develop to come to the point where you're at? The number one thing that you need in order to become the person that is living the best life possible is understanding value and understanding communication at the same time. Value means the value in other people and the value in yourself. Okay, what are my values? What are my morals? What is integrity? How can I be a pure, honest person? Because the more value I know to give, the more I will get back. The secret of life is people. If anything in life you want, other people have that. So if you can provide as much value in any subject of life towards another person, you will get that same exact value back. Money, relationships, success, status, power, anything. All you have to do is give your value to that person. And in order to understand value and to give it, the vehicle of giving is communication. Cool. Right? Yeah, so agreed. understanding people, understanding value, and knowing how to communicate are the three pillars of life in order to get anything that you want. I think this was a very juicy podcast, but unfortunately we really have to cut them off. I, I know. Thank they, you for the knowledge, bro. They've been waiting, so we really yeah, gotta the, go. The, the people are waiting, but thank you for the knowledge. And thank I you, wish I could uh, ask you invite. more questions. That's the thing. If it's I unfortunate. T what? Time is limited, my friend. Well, everybody, thank you. Olaf, thank you for taking the time and no being worries. here. Um, at home, be sure you subscribe. And if you're w listening to this, then also just go to my YouTube channel and subscribe. It's Rabin. Yeah. Have a good one. Ciao. Don't forget, subscribe.